Today I'm sharing how I turned this $30 IKEA dresser into this gorgeous antique map cabinet. I'm also sharing tips on how to achieve an oil-based look with water-based products, how to create wormholes, how to use lazy sanding to your advantage, and also how to store a paint gun in between coats. Just let me get set up and I'll be right back. So this is the second apothecary or map type cabinet I've restyled. I love the first one so much I could not sell it and I'll be sharing where it is in my home at the end of today's video. Here's the salvage dresser I started with. I found this at my local restore selling for $30. I believe it's an older Ikea dresser made of soft pine. Um, it did have some dings and scratches but that's exactly what I wanted for this old style map cabinet cabinet look. I started by removing the old hardware. If you ever have a screw that doesn't want to come out, all you have to do is give it a tap with the end of your screwdriver, which is exactly what I did here. Once all the hardware was removed, I went ahead and took out all the drawers. And as I'm doing so, I like to number them. Not so much with these newer pieces, it doesn't make that big of a difference, but whenever you're working with an old vintage piece of furniture, it's very important to number the drawers. Older pieces can be finicky, and if you put the drawers in in a different order than they were originally placed, they may not fit properly. So I'm just in the habit of numbering my drawers whenever I take them out. Once all the drawers were out and numbered, the hardware was off, I went ahead and gave it a really, really good cleaning with white lightning and a sponge. White lightning is a TSP substitute. I like mixing it in a bottle, a spray bottle of water, spraying it on and using a large sponge to clean the furniture inside and out. The thing to remember when using TSP or TSP substitutes is to make sure that you rinse them off really well before you start to paint. Once the piece was clean and dry, I filled the old hardware holes with Bondo. I have a full tutorial on how to use Bondo, which I'll include in the cards above and down below in the description. But the basis of it is I take about a golf ball sized portion of Bondo, I mix it with a pea-sized amount of hardener. Once the Bondo and the hardener have been mixed and react together, you have only a small window of time to actually use it before this starts hardening up. So the great thing about Bondo is it dries so fast because you can be ready to sand your piece within 10 minutes. So it's a huge time saver for me. The not so great thing about Bondo is you have to work fast. So once all the hardware holes were filled with Bondo, it was time for some lazy sanding. <laughs> I know this sounds really funny, but I'm telling you this lazy sanding technique that, that I've made up works so well if you're trying to get an antique or vintage type of look onto your furniture. And it couldn't be easier to do because the less perfect this is, the better this is going to look. So using my new Bosch Orbital Sander, which is fabulous by the way, I put on a 120 grit sandpaper and started sanding the top. My lazy sanding technique is to create some depth and variance to my final finish. Uh, so I remove part of the finish, but I also leave part of it. Unlike when you're trying to remove the entire finish, so you get down to the bare wood to get a uniform stained look, this is the exact opposite. You want to get down to the bare wood in some areas and you want to have the finish, scuffed finish of course, just left on some of the other areas. 
Once I completed all the flat surface areas with the sander, I actually hand sanded all the rounded edges. This piece has rounded edges on the top and the bottom, so I just folded an orbital sanding pad in half. I believe it was, I believe it was 120 grit as well, and I just hand sanded all the edges. Again, not perfectly. The finish was left in some areas and it was sanded down to the wood in others. Here's how it looked after the entire piece was sanded. Again, you can see some areas are sanded down to the bare pine. Other areas still have the top coat. It's a scuff top coat, of course, but the top coat is still left on in some areas. And this is my lazy sanding technique. At the end of the video, you'll see how well this works for these old school, antique, vintage types of makeovers. Now, I love the look of antique mapped cabinets, but they're not really practical for storage. So here's how to recreate a similar look with storage that works for your modern home. Faux drawers. And to create these faux drawers, I used my Bosch router and a 3 16th single flute straight router bit. A little pro tip is to test your router bit on a scrap piece of board to make sure it's the exact profile that you're looking for. To create these faux drawers, I decided on splitting each drawer in half. So I started by measuring the halfway mark on each drawer face. Then I used a square straight edge to mark right down the center of the drawer in pencil. I set the depth of my bit and then I measured the center of my bit to the edge of the router plate. This is the allowance I needed to set up my guide with clamps. Then following my guide, I routered the faux drawer. Once the faux drawer line was routered, I hand sanded the sharp edges smooth. And voila! I have a faux drawer all set up for my map cabinet. I went ahead and repeated this process on each and every drawer. And now for the finish. Here's the fun part. I wanted to give this map cabinet an oil-based rich finish. However, I just wanted to use water-based products. So here I am applying a water-based Voodoo Gel Stain in the color Tobacco Road, which I'll include in the description below. But I just want you to see how the lazy sanding finish reacts with this water-based stain. You can see that there's splotchy areas as I'm putting it on. Now this may look scary at first, <laughs> but just wait till the end of the video till you see how it all comes together. Trust me. This blotchiness is exactly what you want. I went ahead and applied Tobacco Road to each and every drawer. Then I went ahead and I applied it to the top and the sides of this dresser. I've used Tobacco Road on numerous pieces and they all had different types of wood. And I have to say, I always love how the color of this water-based stain turns out. It's one of my favorites. To give this piece an even more old world look and add some more character, I decided to add some wormholes into this wood. This piece already had some dings and scratches. So to blend them in and create more character, faux wormholes were the way to go. And this is really easy to do. I took a scrap piece of wood, I drilled in some screws so they would stick out of the other side and then I banged them onto the wood. I used a hammer to bang them in to create deeper holes. And then I also used my hand to create smaller holes. This was a lot of fun. It was like stress therapy. <laughs> it's a great way to get a little frustration out. Now here's where some magic happens. I applied a second coat of the tobacco road and you'll notice that it goes into these faux wormholes that I created and once they're darkened up with the stain they really look authentic. 
The second coat of Tobacco Road not only darkens up the wormholes, but it's also creating another layer of stain onto the faux drawers. These drawers are already starting to have a richer look to them. Here's a close-up look of what the dresser and the dresser drawers looked like after two coats of stain. Once the two coats of stain were dry, I mixed up a paint wash with a 50-50 mix of coffee bean chalk mineral paint and water. You can see how watery this wash really is once I dip my paintbrush into it, but I add some onto my brush and I applied it onto the drawers and then using a lint-free shop towel, I remove the excess in the direction of the grain. I repeated this on all the drawers and then moved on to the body of the piece. And you can see here as I'm applying the wash, it is watery, yet there's still a lot of body to it. Like it does have pretty darn good coverage. And again, this is a 50-50 mix, half water, half paint. So as I'm applying it, you see that it is clinging to the piece. And then when I am removing the wash with the shop towel, you can see how this gorgeous color remains on the piece. And with the stain, the tobacco road stain peeking through. Layering water-based products like this really give a piece an antique stained look. Once the first coat of the paint wash was all dry, I gave everything a light sanding with a 220 grit sanding pad. Then using a dampened microfiber soft cloth, I removed all the dust and look at this. Isn't it starting to look like an antique wood? It looks just fabulous. To create more depth and more character, I applied another second coat of wash on this piece. This time, in some areas, I wiped it off with the grain, but you'll see in other areas, I'm using a pouncing sort of motion, and then I'm wetting it with a little bit of spray mist, some water, just some water, uh, to keep the wash activated. And I'm just distributing the paint in sort of a non-uniform way. Again, this will give a pe the piece a really nice antique old look. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. I just kept working away at the drawers and at the top and the sides until I actually liked the look of what I was seeing. I was taking some of the wash off in areas and I was leaving it thicker in others. Another nice thing about working with these water-based products is how fast they dry. So when you're working with oil-based stains, the dry time is quite long. With water-based products, within an hour or two, you can be adding the additional coat. And speaking of coats, I was really happy with the way my second coat of wash ended up looking. I was just tickled pink with it, so now it was time to top coat. To finish achieving an oil-based stain finish using water-based products, tinting your top coat will make a huge difference. This adds another layer of depth. Um, I used my leftover coffee bean wash and I added it to this satin clear coat. Uh, probably between 5 and 10% paint wash is all that you'll need. It, you, you don't want to add too much paint to a top coat. I love to spray my top coats. However, if you brush your top coats on, tinting your top coat works just as well. You can use a paintbrush or tint your top coat, use a paintbrush to apply it on. Here I'm straining my tinted top coat. And the reason being is because this jar was opened and the wash was also sitting around for a day. So if it's a brand new jar, I will not bother filtering. However, if it's a jar that has been opened and sometimes you get dried little pieces or whatever, you don't know what falls in there, right? It's a really good thing to strain your paint before applying the top coat. I've also had a lot of questions about the consistency of paint and or top coat being sprayed through my paint sprayer. I like the consistency of what I like to say a melted milkshake. 
And the way I test my melted milkshake consistency is I use a paint stick or a paint stir, stir it up, and then I let the paint and or top coat drip off it. If it drips off it within one consistent line, so it doesn't break up, it's not dripping, then you know that you have the right consistency. It will have enough body to stick to your piece, yet it will be thin enough to spray through your sprayer beautifully. I went ahead and sprayed the body first, and then I moved on to the drawers. But I just wanted to point out that you'll see that it has a milky consistency, even though it's been tinted with the wash. So whether you're brushing your top coat, your tinted top coat on, or whether you're spraying it on, don't be surprised that it will still have a milky consistency, even if you've tinted it with some paint. And now as promised at the beginning of this video, I wanna share a really great quick tip with you. You guys probably know the tip that in between coats of paint, you can wrap your paintbrush in some saran wrap or some plastic so it doesn't dry out. So you don't have to wash your paintbrush between each and every coat. Did you know you can do the exact same thing when you're spraying? <laughs> I do this all the time. Rather than dump the product out, clean out the whole paint gun, and reset up everything again for my next coat of top coat, this is what I do. I disconnect the compressor hose. I wash the nozzle really, really well so no paint will dry up in the nozzle holes. And then I take some saran wrap and wrap the nozzle and the gun so air doesn't get to it. On top of that, I'll wrap a full plastic bag around it and then it can sit there for an hour, two hours, three hours, even four or five hours until I apply my second coat. This is a huge time saver. And here's what the drawers looked like with their second coat. Here's that milky top coat consistency that I was talking about. But wait until you see what this all looks like once it's dried. The following morning, I headed downstairs to put on the finishing touches. I removed these IKEA feet. And I use, the IKEA always comes with Allen keys. And I bought this Husky tool from Home Depot, has a variety of Allen key sizes. So it's really, really handy to have around. Uh, I removed the feet easily. And then I added these caster wheels. These little wheels make this piece really easy to move. And it also lowers the piece down to the ground, which gives it a more antique map cabinet look. <music> I have to say, I was really pleased with how this piece was turning out. Can you tell? <laughs> For the final touch, I added this catalog hardware. And I have to say, this piece came together beautifully. I am so happy with how it all turned out. And before I show you the before and after, I just wanted to show you the other piece that I had mentioned at the beginning of the video that's now in my living room underneath my TV. It is great for storage and I have to admit, I just love the look. I used all the same techniques that I just showed you here in this video. Uh, of course, it was a different type of wood and a much lighter top coat finish was on it, but I did use, like I mentioned, the exact same technique as I used on this map cabinet. And speaking of which, now for the big reveal. Here is the before, and here is the after. I hope you love this piece as much as I do. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial, and I can't wait to hear what you think, so be sure to comment down below. If you've gained any value from the video, give it a like and a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe before you leave and hit that bell so you get all the new notifications to my channel when I upload. You can also follow me over at salvageinspirations.com where I have over 500 furniture painting tutorials teaching you how to make your furniture fabulous. And until next time, have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys. Thank you.